Welcome everybody to tonight's home clinic. A home clinic is where we grab one quality coach and he presents on one specific subject for you guys to enjoy and he usually does that from home. If you guys have been enjoying this series and would like to see it continue, uh, we want to ask that you would like and subscribe below. Those things certainly help us to grow and is kind of that feedback to say this is, yeah, this is a good thing. Keep this coming. If you have a desire to present in the future, reach out to us on Twitter, DM us, that's at Chief at the Chief Pigskin. All right, without further ado, tonight's home clinic. Hey, I'm Coach Daniel McDonald, head football coach at Our Lady of Providence High School in Clarksville, Indiana. I'm here with Ty Gower. He is the defensive coordinator at Princeton High School in uh, Princeton, Texas, right? Yes, sir. Good deal. Um, coach today is going to talk about tools you can use in multiple defenses, multiple fronts. Uh, which is something that I think is going to be beneficial because a lot of times as a defensive guy, you know, I completely kind of tune out to some of the 3-3 three, three stack stuff, even though it might be good stuff that I could potentially use in my 4-2-5 scheme. Uh, Coach, is that something you're going to look for, or, or your audience should look for today? Yeah, I mean, we're odd front base. We're 3-4 base. Um, you're, like I said, you're going to see a lot of things that, that you know, adding tools to your toolbox. Um, you know, again, a lot from an odd front base, but I'll show you some things that you can do from a third down package standpoint, you can do from a four, four down standpoint, um, you know, and even if you are a four down, you know, a way to kind of have, have plan B of, you know, having, having a three stack answer to two back um, or, or having an empty check, you know, having a, having a different empty check uh, to three by two or, or four by one, you know, something that uh, a way to get from four down to three down if you want and, and having that empty call, um, on, a, on a game night. So, um, you know, you go to these clinics and, and a guy talks about one topic for 50 minutes, you know, and, and for, you know, for 15, it's like, okay, I got it. The guy keeps rambling for 30 minutes. I've done it. I've, I've been guilty of it. Um, and so tonight I want to give you something, a lot of somethings that, that, that I, us, we have done. Um, I've been in Oklahoma. I just finished my first year in Texas. Um, stuff that, again, I hope you can take away that you know, one thing may not fit you at all, but one thing might fit you. Um, and, and if it does, and I've done my job, and you've got you've got something out of, out of uh, this Chief Pigskin Clinic, and I appreciate you guys having me on. Awesome, Coach. I'm looking forward to it. So, whenever you're ready, go ahead and share your screen, and we'll get rolling. Sure, guys. Uh, my name is Ty Gower. I'm the defense coordinator at Princeton High School in Princeton, Texas. Uh, if you're not sure where that is, we're on the we're on the very northeast side, DFW Metroplex. Uh, if you're familiar with Highway 75, um, you know, it, it runs through Denison, Sherman, uh, into McKinney. Uh, and we're, we're right there five, seven minutes east of McKinney on Highway 380. Um, and we are absolutely burst at the seams. Um, we're a 5A high school, 5A Division II high school uh, in Texas classification. Um, you know, we have a great place here. Like I said, we're blowing up. Uh, great kids, great community, um, great place to raise your family, great staff. Very, very blessed and humbled to be at the place I am in Princeton. Um, there's my Twitter, my email, my cell phone. Guys, feel free to reach out. I don't have all the answers. Um, you know, as a, I've heard a coaching cliche. I've, I've found a few answers that work and a lot more that don't. So um, tonight, you know, like I said, I, I hope I can give you something uh, that is that is uh, worth your time. Uh, that is, you know, as, as we say, not expensive um, to install, uh, to give your kids. So, uh, you know, without further ado, I, I'm, I'm kind of going to start with, with my influences, you know, I believe with any clinic, and this goes for guys who've spoke, who've never spoken to clinic or spoke once, twice, three, 14 times, doesn't matter. Regardless of what you're speaking on offense, defense, both teams, uh, I'm very, very big on influences. Um, I'm a coach's kid. I'm born and raised in Oklahoma. Um, I come from a teacher's coach's background. Um, you know, th there are, are my people. And when I say my people, I'm very, very proud to call them that because those are people that helped me uh, get to where I am currently. You know, and, and won some, lost some, uh, been successful, had good nights, had bad nights. Um, you know, I have played for a state championship, have won a district championship, and have done some good things uh, with good people as, as an assistant, as a, as a defense coordinator. Um, so, you know, one thing that I want you to take away to start is – giving credit where credit is due. Uh, and with that, you know, my dad, Andy Gower, you know, some of you Oklahoma guys, if you're on here, you may recognize that, that name. Um, 
I said, coach kid, man, there's nothing like, nothing like being a coach kid. Uh, you know, the yellow dog nights, the, um, being the water boy, the ball boy, the, you know, everybody in town knows you that, that type of deal. So it's, it's had a big influence on me becoming a coach. Um, you know, and obviously you can read, read down the list. You know, my first coaching job, I guess my student teaching job, I was 22 years old and coached my series at Purcell High School um, in, in Purcell, Oklahoma, and, and learned a lot of offense. You know, I played defense in, in, in college. And, um, you know, from there I went to be a graduate assistant at GA in, in Arkadelphia, Arkansas for Scott Maxfield at, at Henderson State University. And it was a young 23-year-old, didn't know anything. Um, that dude took me under his wing. And I wouldn't be um, – in the place I am now without Coach Maxwell. Coach Maxwell is like a second dad to me. And, um, you know, the names on this list speak for themselves. Um, been very, very fortunate enough and blessed to be with, with guys that, um, you know, Mike Larvich, um, big, you know, he's OC, big, big influence on me. Um, coach Spavitol hired me uh, to, to, coach, to coach safeties at Broken Arrow High School. Um, you know, those names that you see there, that they, they've done lots of, lots of webinars and other YouTube clinics. So, a lot of this I've taken from this person or that person trying to put my own little flavor spin on it, but you're going to see a lot of this stuff is begged, stolen, and borrowed. So, and it's come from guys like this. But what we're going to get into, guys, is tools for your coaching toolbox. Okay, again, you know, whether you're a 3-4, a 3-stack, a 4-2, a 4-3, um, you're going to see lots of things that, that you may say that ain't for me, but there may be something that, that you find that, you know what, we're going to install, we're going to implement. So the first one is, is – a very, very brief practice idea. Um, and one of those is, is when we get to our team sessions, okay, we do a lot of group work, a lot of pod work, a lot of half line. I'm um, sure we do indie, you know, we do individual drills like everybody else does. Um, but I know that I've been around places and seen places that say, okay, we're going to do 10 minutes since I run, 10 minutes of Pascal, 10 minutes of team, boom, that's it, we're done. And, and I think, and there are times for that. Okay, there are times for that. But I think, you know, within a, a game week situation, I think you have to compartmentalize your, your practice periods. Okay, instead of just saying, all right, guys, we're going to do team for 10 minutes, do first down, second down, third down, the end. And we do that. Okay, we do that. But I think there are times that you have to focus on one concept, not just the overall team session. Um, you know, and, and for example, you know, let, let's say that you want to do a four-man rush or five-man blitz period. Okay, regardless of, you know, it's two by two or, or two back or trips or whatever it is, this period is based solely on four and five man pressure. Okay, then the next one, you know, FTB, formation and boundary. Okay, so, and you can tell your kids this, so they've got their mind thinking about it, or you can just throw it out. But for five minutes, they're going to see nothing but, but three by one, you know, trips to the boundary. Okay, they're going to see nothing but two by, but twins to the boundary and maybe motion back to the field. Okay, so, again, you know, I want you to understand the idea that when we – do team. And guys, again, we do team on first, second, third down, just like we play a game. But we don't do that till Wednesday. Okay, so on Monday and Tuesday, we are compartmentalizing our team period. Okay, that I, you know, I only want to work, for example, a five-minute period on only first down calls. Okay, their favorite first down calls versus, versus our game plan first downs. Uh, you know, another one is um, I, I want to work uh, a five-minute period of only the red zone. You know, uh, uh, whether it's 15 in, 10 in, whatever it is. Um, I want to work a five-minute period of, of what we call the black zone, which is, oh, you know, the 15, uh, minus 15, minus 14, minus 13, you know, the, when they're backed up, right? And, and so, and, and you can, guys, you can go crazy and wild with all these periods and how you want to do this. But I think on a Monday and Tuesday idea, um, you know, we, we do a good job of saying, okay, guys, hey, and we tell our kids sometimes, Guys, you're only going to see trips. So we're working all of our trips, blitz checks, and all of our trips, coverage calls. Um, you know, and then we'll do a five-minute or ten-minute period of, of only third and long package. You know, so our base, you know, our, our nose guard is over there sipping water. It's this five-minute rest period. But we, we've been able to steal from the offense or whatever to get, um, you know, a, a package of what we call our renegade package, or, you know, that we have the fastest 11 dudes on our roster. And so you'll see – uh, that on the on game film, but instead of just doing, like I said, 10 minutes of inside, 10 minutes of scale, and 10 minutes of, of team, you know, compartmentalize. Okay, hey, guys, you're only going to see two by two because it's a favorite formation. Guys, you're only going to see their favorite three plays, and it's two runs and one pass, and that's what you're just going to repeat over and over and over and over. 
And, and so I think your kids get an idea of, hey, all right, here are their favorite three runs, or here are our favorite three blitz checks to trips. Here are our favorite four-man rushes against this team. And so, you know, and the, another way you do that is by good on good periods. And I know some of you guys who are thinking, man, I'm in a small school. I've only got 30 kids on a roster. I don't know how I can build, you know, how I can do a best 22. Well, if you got 30, you've got 22 who can rep in. You know, you can get 11 on offense, 11 on defense, and it may not be what you want. It may not look pretty, but it still built, builds depth. You know, again, and I'm a small town kid, guys. I grew up in a small town class A um, environment. And, and doing best 22 periods, you may have that freshman offensive guard that is never going to see the, the, the game field for you on Friday night, but he's going to get older and be a sophomore, junior, senior. Why not get him reps right now in practice versus your junior, versus your senior, so when it does come time for him to step up in a varsity role as a sophomore, I'm not going to say he's ready to go, but he's more ready than he would have been over there on the sideline. Now, and, again, that's my belief. That's my philosophy. I'm not saying that's, that's, that's correct by any means. Um, but, but I am a, we are a big believer in doing, doing good on good periods, you know, and, and then, you know, drive the ball periods, you know, we'll, we'll set the ball down to minus 30 at, in the middle of practice and offense, you know, you got, you're driving football defense. You're trying to get them in a three and out. Um, and then we'll do a goal line. You guys, you can think of all these periods and all these good on goods of what you want to do. Um, but I, I'm a firm believer in, in organization of practice and, what are you compartmentalizing? You know, you're doing your, your indie drills, you're doing your tackling drills, your blocking drills, all your alignment drills. I mean, you're, you're doing all that, okay? But when it comes down to the schematics, when it comes down to how are we going to cover three by one, you know, what are we going to do against three by one and that their stud is over there by himself? You're going to leave a corner on out. No, you you got to have a, a trips adjustment or what we call a jersey call. We'll go over that in, in a, uh, this video. So, anyway – there's one idea to give to your toolbox as a coach, all right? Um, next one, defending 20 personnel. Now, you're going to see this from an odd front alignment, okay? And I know some of you 4-2 guys, you 4-3 guys saying, Coach, that's not me. We're going to get into an odd front. Um, but it might be a very, very easy changeup for you um, as a plan B or something that maybe you've rep for week one, week two, week three, week four, and you're, you've, you, know, you haven't shown it but you've got that opponent week five or week six that, that you feel good about showing it because you've repped it since August um, and it comes middle of the year and you're ready to do it. So I'm going to show you again how a, a way, a couple ways that we have defended 20 um, in the past. But first off, how do you classify 20? Okay. And why 20, you know, ability to add another gap, you know, people are getting that sniffer set, you know, and they're sitting behind the guard behind the tackle or one, you know, one foot outside of the tackle. Um, ability to have one back or two back run game, you know, and, and we find people that that guy is a tight end. He puts his hand in the dirt, but he can also back up six inches. Well, guess what? He's not a two back run fit, you know, it's a two back run fit. And you better have a way to, to find the seventh fitter, you know, and they also love it because they can isolate the X, you know, get that seventh fitter down the box and throw glance off of him or get one-on-one -on -one deep post, you know, go play action shot, go seven, seven man pro and you're one-on-one -on -one with the corner. So, how do we combat it? What answers do we have? We Different front variations. Okay, and we're, again, we're going to talk about what we call Oki, a 4-I, 0-4-I. I know people call it tight. Um, and, again, you four down in front, guys, you may be saying, we don't do that. But as a coach, again, I'm trying to add to your toolbox. Um, you know, change up your coverage of twins. Uh, teach the free – our free safety is the guy that, that is our linebacker. Okay. Um, you know, when you get that two-back sniffer set, um, we got – I teach him as a linebacker. I coach our safeties. Um, Four-man rush principles, you know, how are you going to get to, and you, you four-man front guys, you will like a way I'll show you here in a little bit about we start a three down, but we're going to rush to a four. So I'll show you that in a little bit. And then later we'll talk about what we mean by open blitz to a two-man surface. All right, so, um, you know, how do you classify it again? 20 light versus 20 heavy. Well, Coach, what's light versus heavy mean? Okay, 20 light means you've got the quarterback and the back, but the second back is also like a receiver. Right, you know, you get lots of those guys who keep all who keep the same eleven dudes on the field. They get two by two, three by one, but that slot guy, he's also the split back. You know, so you got the quarterback and the guy on the right, guy on the left. Well, that's twenty light, right? So when we're game planning, we think about twenty light run game. You know, you're thinking outside zone, stretch, option, food. You know, you're not thinking that a slot's going to go insert on a Mike linebacker. 
You know, they're not going to go kick a five technique with you. Now, can they? Sure, I get it. But when it comes to, to 20 light run game, you're thinking, again, outside zone, you're not thinking that you're getting ISO, right? Or you're, you know, you're thinking more boots, nuggets, uh, maybe some seven-man pro. You know, how are you going to, to treat that? Um, again, like I said, I ain't going to treat that X by himself. You know, and then when you get 20 heavy, you know, now it's a sniffer type guy, right? He's, he's not at 10 personnel. It's true 20, 20 heavy. So that guy is – He's either tied in with a hand in dirt or he backs up six inches. Now he's a he's a sniffer. Right? He's running now. You, he's a guy that's going to insert. He's a guy that's going to you know hack and split zone. Um, so you've got to have answers and think about before the ball's even snapped. Okay, is it twenty light or is it twenty head? And what run game you're going to get based on that second back? You know, in the formation structure, you know, we classify as twin open. It's two by one. It's twins on one side. It's open to the other. Um, and we talk about near and far for sniffer alignment. So if he's near, he's to the twins. If he's far, he's to uh, what would be obviously the, the open side to the X side. And then running back alignment is, is plus to the twins or minus uh, away. Okay. And, and, you know, stuff we found is guys who get in like twin open and they get in what we call far minus. Okay. Where the sniffer and the back are, are to the open side. You know, here's kind of a way that you got to think, number one, here might come jet, you know, or, or bullet or whatever, you know, what anybody calls it with that slot receiver because you're going to get, you know, a, crack, a push crack by the receiver, the sniffer leading up on somebody, and, and the, the back, you know, the back leading up on somebody too, right? Um, you know, you, you may get the idea where they're going to go seven-man pro, slide everybody to the field, um, go sniffer as a six and the back as a seventh and, and try to throw – one-on-one uh, -on -one post with the X receiver. So something you got to think about when you're game planning, you know, where's the sniffer? Where's the back? Are they the same side? Are they opposite? Is one of them, you know, is the sniffer near? Is the back minus, right? And so we talk about that. Okay, here's a scenario. Just talking about the structure. It's so like this. We would classify this as twin open, uh, far plus, right? Far with the H, plus with the back. Okay, so now you're thinking, all right, here could, here could come like stretch, okay? Here could come, you know, some type of RPO, especially with the box of the twin side. All right, so you got to think about uh, what are you getting from uh, from where the T and, and, and the H, you know, where they are uh, in the back backfield. So now, how do we combat that? Well, here you go. I talked about you four-man front guys. One way that we like to do it is we like to send a four-man rush from the twin side, okay? We don't – as a base, we don't matter where the back is, okay? We like to send the, the nickel or, you know, by Sam from the twin side. Okay. And the reason we like it, number one, we're setting a hard edge to the twin. So we're getting a what's going to be a five technique. Or what's going to be a five technique um, to the twin side. And that allows us because we are not front and because that we do play um, two eye structure and we do play palms, quarters, you know, that type of, of coverage concept, we can push the mic out to become the outside back and you'll see us here in a little bit. So in a, in a way, you four-man front guys, we're going to get to a four-man front. But what we're going to do is we're going to play B gap. We're going to play one of the A gaps with the nose, the other A gap with the wheel, the B gap with the tackle. Okay, the jack is going to play the D. If you know, and if they were to you know kick him or, or whatever, now your C gap becomes your free safety. So we can push this palms back or, or what becomes our Sam out because he won't have a gap and obviously to the you know to the twin side obviously you're going to get a hard edge uh in the c gap with the with the sam nickel back all right so here's a way on the film how we can do it all right so again notice our opponent they gave us a two by one with a with the sniffer so it's true 20 um and what we're doing is we're bringing our nickel on a blitz okay our sam and again we're bringing from from the field from the twin side and we're going to cut we are our fancy work saying cut which all that means is the mic, because he's out of the fit and he doesn't have a gap, he can cut to still play three or two with our corner and our strong safety, and he'll become third as, again, what becomes our outside linebacker. All right, so um, another reason we like it is because, you know, we can get, you know, one, two, three, four, five in our wheel, six in our jack, and seven in our three safety as a fitter. All right, and you'll see how this works. Okay, so again, I'll get to, to a tighter copy, all right? 
why do we like it? Again, number one, and it's, you know, first and 10, you know, whatever you like, right? Um, why do we like it? We're setting a hard edge on the twin side, okay, from the nickel. Two, we're able to push out our mic to play outside back, okay? He's three over two, so we're changing up who the RPO player. Now, this, this team put a guy in the pistol to the twins, away from the twins. Uh, the quarterback was, was really good. Um, so we had to change up who the, who the, the match two player was. So we're going to match two now with the mic. Instead of playing drop eight, we're going to send the nickel, the Sam, to, from, the, from the twin side, create a hard edge, and push out the cut player, and the mic change up an RPO player too. So there's no reason why. Now notice, we're not slanting out of this. I'll get to, a, uh, to the end zone copy. Okay, can we slant? Yeah, can we get to, to a, what would be over in this situation? You know, if you're bringing a five, a three, slant to a shade, Slant to a five. Can we do that? Yes. Have we done that? Yes. But we're playing, we're playing uh, base technique here. So we're playing a four I, a zero, and a four I. And notice that, that uh, we're kind of three stacked in this situation. Okay. But we're going to get to um, kind of some four two fits in a way. Again, taking this mic right here out of the fit. Because again, he doesn't have a fit. He, he, he doesn't have a gap to his side. Okay, and again, you see our free safety coming, coming from depth. So, again, we want our free safety at the top to make it look like we're trying to take away the, the X receiver to the open side away you know, pre-snap, right? That, that, the, the glance, the post doesn't look real good pre-snap. Okay? We, you know, we want a hard deck, okay? what we call hard deck. Um, we want that free safety eight, nine yards to make it look pre-snap that we're taking away this glance. Um, and again, he's going to become our seventh fitter week. And again, what's great about it is um, now I know they, they kind of motion over the sniffer, right? So he's kind of going to become what, you know, the D gap player. Notice how they run outside zone. Our Jack, our, our weak boundary outside linebacker is going to play, uh, going to play the C gap. Obviously, he's going to run outside zone. Now our edge force D gap player is going to become the free safety. Okay, so there's one way uh, to defend 20 um, by bringing a fourth. All right, next, next clip is out of a three stack. Okay, now we are not a three stack guru by any means. We're a three, four base defense, but this night we three stacked it. Found a way that was very, very easy this night. Okay, I'm not saying it's good against other people, but this night it, it, it was good for us. And now we are a drop eight, rush three defense. Okay, and so here I showed you earlier where we brought the fourth. Here we're going to play static defense, okay? We're just going to play read defense. So what we're doing here is we're going to play four I, zero, four I, and we're going to three stack it to where we're a 50, zero, 50. Obviously playing three over two quarters with our nickel strong and corner. And our strong safety, or our free safety, excuse me, is going to be our lever, or our box player. Okay, so what we're doing with our jack and our mic is we're sniffer keying this. Okay, so and, and they are spill players. Okay, th again, this night. And we can change up our run fits or two back in kind of a weekly base. Yes, we have a base, but obviously you game plan Saturday and Sunday. So what we're doing with our mic and our jacket, we're keying the sniffer, and they are spill players because they're gonna have a box or a lever player outside of them. Okay, so and, and they are eyes on the H. Okay, the Q and the T do not do not exist to them on this game plan, right? Playing four I, zero, four I. The will, he's mesh to flow. So he is seeing mesh. The flow, all right. Obviously, you know the old triangle like everybody in, in America teaches. Okay, um, and so we're we're like I said, three over two. Free safety is uh, is your box player, right? So from the film standpoint, you'll see you'll see us in a three stack. Okay, obviously they put they put twins to the boundaries. They wanted to isolate the kid up top, and, and he's and he's good. So again, we had to give the look, the appearance with this free safety that yeah, he's going to be our seventh fitter. But we had to give you a look that you can't throw the quick glance, the, you know, the over-the-top over post. Um, we're going to have an underneath and over-the-top player in the corner. Okay, so you'll notice the alignment, 4-I, 0-4-I, 50 0 50 with our Mike, Will, and Jack, and our, and our Will in the zero, right? So, again, the Mike and Jack, 250s are gonna, going to, to see the sniffer. If the sniffer comes to me, I'm going to spill it. Okay, I become now the C-gap player because I have a 4-I in front of me. I'm, who's the B-gap player, obviously, right? which now in this case would be the lever player, the, the box player, and the free safety, all right? The will is going to be, again, the mesh to flow, 
Okay, you're going to see that he gets mesh to pull, so he's going to become a spill player. He's going to chase the four technique. The mic, again, the sniffer's going to go away from him. He's going to become what we call the overlap player. All right? The nickel is obviously – now, here's the weakness of this, okay, and I'll be straight with you, is our nickel is our conflict player, okay? Um, so he's got a no back set. He's got to be able to pop his feet right here, be, be what we call the two-pop player. Um, and, and no back set, no, he is a conflict, all right? So you see it from a, from a, a full, full time shot, all right? So again, we're playing four I, zero, four I. The jack got, got, the spit, got the sniffer to him. He's going to spill it to the box to his free safety, okay? Notice the second pull, the second pull by the guard, we're going to spill that pull with our zero, with our 50, uh, I'm sorry, our zero wheel back. Okay, now our four eye, great ball, get off. Obviously, he sees guard pull. He's going to get in the hip pocket. Obviously, TFL, really, really good by him. But from a tight copy, okay, no, it's just a six in the box. Okay, don't worry about the Sam Nick. All right, so we're playing four eye, zero, four eye. Our nose right here is going to play what we call a lag technique. If he gets double to him, he's going to engage center and feel the double. If the double comes to him with that, with that guard, we'll see him throw his butt into the guard's lap. Okay, so from, from a slow motion standpoint, Okay, now, I know that guard's looking at that 50 linebacker thinking I, I can get to him, and I get it. On, on the board, on paper, it looks like he can. But because our, our Mike was keying that sniffer so well and, and he's a wet, the sniffer's away, we're fast to overlap. Okay, so you'll notice again, our Jack – and our mic are seeing the sniffer. Our will is seeing mesh to flow. Okay, so when I say mesh to flow, there's mesh, you're gonna get guard pull, he's gonna be over and spill the second pull by the guard. And again, you'll notice how we're double, what we, you know, what we call double spill, double lever. So it's spill with the jack, it's spill with the will. There's our overlap player. Here's our boxer in the free safety as the seventh fitter. Okay, now let me show you how a three, four standpoint. Okay, notice that we went from 50, zero, 50 to now we're pointing up in the box. Still playing the same front, four I, zero, four I. Still playing the same coverage, three over two to twins. All right, now, um, again, notice we're 3-4. All right, now notice that uh, we're going to see the mesh, okay, mesh sniffer with the free safety, so I'll show you. All right, so here's an opponent that they got in the game of the, you know, the, the, the sniffer was behind the guard, behind the tackle. He's one yard outside the tackle, all right? So we had a treating, um, obviously, like two back when his hand, you know, was not in the dirt, right? So here we go. From, from this standpoint, we're playing 4 eyes, 0 4 I. The jack, our outside linebacker, is a boxer. Okay, so he's looking at the sniffer. The sniffer comes to him. He's going to box it in the D-gap to get it in the cylinder of our free safety. The free safety is looking to, again, the sniffer, this off, tight end, Y off, whatever you want to call him. And he's going to become this C-gap fitter. Now from an end zone copy. Okay, no, so we're pointing up in the box. It's, it's zone. All it is is zone, inside zone with a, with a Y off, right? So from left to right, from uh, with the four I, we're going to play B gap, okay? We're going to play the back door A with the no, uh, nose, the front door A with the wheel, B gap with, with our front side end, D box with their jack and our free safety looking at the sniffer. If he boxes out, I become a C gap player. Our mice going to play nest or, or the rock back technique, which is the C-gap, which now puts our nickel, our Sam, out of conflict. Okay, we're able to play three over two, true three over two, without using our nickel as a primary run field. So, again, I showed you from a three stack earlier. Here's a three four. Very, very easy. The mic and we're looking at mesh to flow. So, the wheel right here, he got mesh to out out. It's zone. He's going to punch the A-gap. The mic, he got zone away. 
to down, down, to scoop, double, whatever you want to call it, he's going to fall back and nest in the backdoor C gap. Okay, now same idea, okay? Here's an opponent that now they put the sniffer, uh, obviously you see behind the guard, all right? Same idea, we're doing it from a three, four standpoint. Just because the, 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 the sniffer behind the guard doesn't change from a base protect perspective. And we were able to, to base run fit it just like we would in spring ball uh, against that opponent from the previous clip and this opponent too. So four I, zero, four I, 20 up in the box, all right? The Jack is, again, our edge force D-gap player. He's looking at the sniffer. When he gets sniffer at him, he's going to go box it, and the sniffer's out. The free safety is going to play the C-gap. Now, Obviously, what you could do to, to a, a two-man surface, obviously, you know, you could force the issue here, okay, and send him. Um, you know, for, for you four down front guys, obviously, you know, you could do it from, uh, from a walked-off two-by-two standpoint, right? You can send him as a four-man rush and box it. Or I know guys who come under and they spill it and play, you know, like weak cover three, you know, like, like a – like a, you know, like a you know, a three-week buzz type of idea and spill it to the free safety if you wanted to do that, okay? Same idea. You know, if you wanted to play a five, a shade strong, a four-eye weak, you're still going to get to kind of an under front. Okay? You're still going to get the five shades of the twins, a three slash four-eye, it's still the B-gap player. I know they're kind of different techniques, but still a B-gap player and, and a walked-off five technique. So, again, you're getting a four-two run fit. It doesn't change. It's just a pre-snap structure, the pre-snap alignment changes. And it gives your opponent, I think, in my opinion, something to work on. Because they've seen four down, they've seen four down, four down, four down. Now, all of a sudden, they see this three down look, and you want to bring this four man jack right here. Now, uh, you set the hard edge, and now you got back to what you want and what's base for you, but it's a different structure and presentation for you uh, or for the offense. Excuse me. Okay, one more. So now they've gone, you know, kind of a, a, a Y off, but he's a trip or he's a number three, right? So notice that the box hasn't changed. Okay, now obviously your weakness, I know your secondary coach going to coach us one on one. I know. I, I'm with old secondary guy who played secondary, he's coach secondary. I, I'm with you. That offense coordinator, is, he is, he's foaming at the mouth. Is he going to throw one on one on you? I get it. If you, if you can do this and feel good, you know, at night and say, hey, I, I feel good about my point of winning, this is great. So, again, front end change, 4 I 0 4 I. Mike Will and 20. Jack, you know, that one-by-one, one, two-by-two player. Okay, so, again, playing quarters to one and two. Your free safety, if the H is vertical, he's going to take H is out. And also says, you know, match two to H. So, if H is out, then he becomes number three and Nick was going to take it. All right, so, from this standpoint, this, this opponent, we treated this guy like a sniffer. I know he's kind of one-by-one one or, or whatever. Um, we treat him just like a two-back. They're going to run split zone here in a little bit. So, again, 4-I, 0-4-I, 20 up in the box. We kind of we kind of walked and backed our jack up this night because they were really, really good at throwing kind of some RPO glance game. So, we wanted to take the window away. But from this standpoint, notice our C-gap player. If they were run outside zone here, our C-gap player would be our free safety. Our D, our, D, our force player, our edge player would be our Nick or Sam. So if you notice, we haven't changed the front. Okay, we haven't changed a four I zero four I from an odd front perspective. Um, you know, again, you notice that the that the the Y or the H or whatever you want to call him, he's truly you know a gap, right? Instead of being behind the guard behind the tackle. So we didn't want to change the box here. We just wanted the 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 free safety play at C gap. Okay, and, and he got really good at it. You know, you see, he's he's what we call it. Uh, we really wanted to be at what's called C seven. Right here, he's about C9, C10. Can he trust himself? I trust him to, to be able to do this, to flat foot it and see what tight end, uh, again, an up tight end, see what he was doing. You 
you know, a lot of guys talking about capping the tight end and, and, and tight front, you know, three, four, you know, four I, zero, four I, you know, we cap it a lot with the free safety. You know, again, I showed you where, where earlier the guy was over here, right? Our, our, our front, you know, with our, with our four I, zero, four I, Mike and our will and our jack didn't change. We're going to cap it with our free safety. Okay, so again, we're capping this, this three by one look with our free safety. So notice you'll see the rock back, okay, the fall back with both our mic and our wheel. Okay, they stack track and fall back off the zone, off the mesh to flow, which again, you see our wheel, he actually tackles a split zone guy. He tackles the hat guy. Um, so in a perfect world, you know, 34, that wheel would fit underneath, which make the ball bounce to seven, and nine's going to chase the sniffer across. So now, when it comes to a gap standpoint, okay, what's happening is now from here, since that sniffer went away, your C gap player is your nickel, your B is your N, is one of your ends, your A front side's the mic, your A on the back door is the nose, your B is the, the end, the rock back, the nest guy is 34 playing the C. When it comes split zone, add another gap, seven's your D gap, and nine is gonna be our, our overlap player. We talked about that, our plus one. Okay, so now going, getting back into 20, okay, now I'm going to show you how, how we blitz it, okay? And you can blitz it all sorts of ways and draw all sorts of blitzes and, and, and all that stuff, okay? But here's a way that we do it, okay? We call it open blitz, okay? This is out of a 20 personnel. Now, here you go. We're going to see a four down front, um, well, both three down and four down, um, that we call open blitz, Okay, it's simple, it's effective, and we're able to execute it. We're going to overload the open side. So, again, it's 20, it's two by. Where well, it's 20 light, like talking about, or 20 heavy. We're going to blitz away from the twins. Okay, we're, we are disregarding and don't care what the backfield says. If we call open blitz, okay, and we game plan where this week open blitz means that. Week two, open blitz means this. Week three, open blitz means this. Okay, so it may change week to week to week what open blitz is versus two back, right? So we're going to count the numbers. And we count the numbers, again, from the center over, right? Disregarding what the backfield says. We're worried about bringing the pressure away from twins. Okay, and the reason we want to do that is we want to keep our three verse two to the field versus twins, our nickel strong in our corner. But also we want to overload three verse two, meaning we're going to get a D lineman, an outside linebacker and, and an inside linebacker versus their guard and tackle. Okay, or you'll see us uh, run a pirate and we're going to get our three technique, our five technique, and our corner to blitz to the open side as well. All right, so again, we love it because we're able to play three versus two, the twins, and, and the trips, we can do the same thing, okay, where we're still four over three. Um, you know, it's an in, you can do a five man press, you can do a single dog blitz, right? Um, so again, I'll, I'll show you. So what we're doing, again, our opponent gave us, you know, Twin open split, you know, obviously it's split back. So what we're doing, we're kind of doing this out of a very hybrid four down front. I know you, you see the five technique, he's, he's standing up. But we're playing a five, a shade, a three, and a, and a walk off five. And what we're going to do here is, again, we call it open blitz. And what we're doing is we're going to pirate the three to the A, pirate the five to the B, and bring the will, okay, bring the will off the, off the, the edge to the C gap. Again, counting the numbers. We want to play three over two with our corner strong nickel to twins. And the guard tackle away, we want to bring three guys there too. That allows for our free safety to be a free hitter, our mic to be able to play the B gap, uh, obviously the shade five side, and our nickel's out of the fit. Okay, he's a, he's a bone. So if you were to get wrapped or whatever, he can be a boxer. So we, we love it to two back. So again, this is just open blitz. So here's one variation for this week. We're again, we're a three five away from away from twins, so you know it's glorified under. Um, and you're bringing pirate with a with a wheel stunt to the C gap on the on the edge. Okay, so uh, now here's a scenario where where we are 
um, we're an odd front, okay, and, and now we're doing what we call hammer. We're going to, we're in a four zero four, and we're hammering down this jack. Now you'll see us run old-fashioned NCAA blitz, okay, cop to the five, shade, cross face the guard. You're the edge rusher. You're going to be the B-gap player, okay. It's old NCAA blitz like everybody in America runs, nothing, nothing new, nothing extravagant. But it's effective because, again, we're playing three over two quarters. They're going to motion the guy out of the backfield, and we really get what we want. Uh, and all it becomes is like zero uh, to the boundary. Okay, so it's, you know, it's a really, really good. Because, again, we're playing head up four, zero, four. Um, they full slid to the field or, or to the strings or whatever it may have been. Um, and we, you know, we got what we wanted. You know, they went full slide. The backs on the on the our jack. The wheels free and the B gap. So again, all this is the open blitz because again, we want to play three over two twins, and we want to bring three versus two against their their open guard and open tackle. Okay, here's a situation where now. You four down front, guys. Here we are, and in, 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 again, and under. So we're playing five, shade, three, five. The five and the shade don't move front side. So we're going to pirate the three to the A, pirate the five to the B. Now we're going to bring the corner. There becomes, again, the overload blitz, the open side. Obviously, we can play quarters here. Um, and we're playing, obviously, you know, hot to one like everybody does when they bring a corner with the free safety. Now, you see the Sam, the nickel go. We kind of had a game plan on this that, um, well, we had a game plan for he became another rusher because – I'm not going to say on here, but because. But normally normally how we would do it is we would – the Sam, that number 11 right there, he would become the three over two player. Okay, so here it is again. Um, you know, it's good against run games. Again, you're setting a hard edge to the, to the boundary, right, away, away from twins. Um, not perfect run fit right here, um, but you notice that the Pirate 3 technique to the A makes the play. And, you know, it, it's really good, you know, and I get some questions about, Coach, well, how would you handle stretch right here? If you're going to get an A, B, a C, and I'm like, well, you know, here's the thing is you've got to, I say overcompensate, okay? You're going to get a, what's called the high wall player in, in our five to three technique, okay? I get it there. You know, they're going to zone the guy who becomes the shade. But you're going to get a high wall player who's going to play the stretch in our jack, our boundary, you know, five, our boundary outside linebacker. Okay, so I gave you two ideas, about 20. Um, you know, both just, just I say two. Three and bringing a four-man. You know, another one and three stacking it. Another one and playing three, four. And, and another one of, of, of bringing uh, five-man overload pressure. Um, oh, obviously away, you know, from twins to the open side, all right? Now, taking away the X, okay? You know, and here's our glorified favorite three-by-one coverage type of deal, and, and their favorite target. But here's the deal. You know, lots and lots and lots of guys put that, that, that their target, their stud, their dude at the, at the X, at the number one receiver, right? Well, you know, if you, if you do this long enough, they're going to put that guy at the number one of the trips, number two of the trips, and number three of the trips, okay? So something to put in your toolbox is have answers for defending the X. And I don't just mean the X, that he's the X receiver away from trips. I mean, he's the X factor. He's the guy. You know, think players, not players. You know, those, those guys you see as offense coordinators, they always have that little you know, that place on their call sheet that says, must get this guy the ball, right? And they've got so many plays that number so-and-so has to have the ball, right? So don't let the guy beat me. Make someone else do it. You know, I can lay my head down at night, you know, if we get beat and, and someone, else, someone else beat us. You know, it doesn't hurt to, you know, obviously it does hurt to lose, but – 
if you can tip your hat to the guy and say, hey, you, you were the guy that we were counting on that was going to beat us, then, hey, you know, tip your hat to him, right? But what we implement every week is what we call a jersey call, meaning when number so-and-so is here, we do this, okay? When number, when number one is at the number one position, we do this. When number one is at the number three in trips, we do this. Now, do we do that every call of every night? No. But there are those times on the first play of the, of the game or, or, you know, when it's, when it's that, that heat of the battle type of thing where, oh, no, now the jersey is number two in the trip. Well, we have to do this. we got to put two guys on him. we got to bracket him. we got to blank him. we got to do something to where he's not allowed to beat us, right? Um, so, again, you'll see one way that we do it, right? And, and to, again, from a coaching standpoint, from a Saturday, Sunday standpoint, make a favorite target cut up. Identify how many times they throw to him regardless formation. Two by two, three by one, two back, doesn't matter. When he's here, they do this, right? Make a favorite target formation. Identify how many times they throw to him in each formation. You know, something you got to think about, again, Coach, when you're on Saturday and Sunday game plan, right? If he's a number one, you're thinking vertical. You're thinking shots, right? Spread the field vertically. You know, here's, here's the guy who's going to take the top off of it. When he's number two or number three, you know, spread the field horizontally. Arrows, bubbles, quicks. You know, does motion dictate how they're going to single him up? Um, you know, again, have have a jersey call because you've built it on on your on your data and huddle, and you've implemented it through through game plan, through huddle, and through practice about okay, guys, when he does this, when I call jersey, we do this whenever he's at. You know, again, make a favorite target D and D. You know, identify how many times they throw to him on certain D and D. You know, here's the deal. Is he the go-to on P and 10? This one's huge. You know, lots of guys cover that guy, and I know, guys, you can throw a shot, you can throw a post play on any first and 10, second and four, third and five, I, I get it. You don't know what the offense coordinator is thinking. But is he out there on P and 10 to be a decoy? You know, out of the four ball games you've got to break down, and you've got so many P and 10s, when I want to say P and 10 possession team, you know, it's the first play of the series. Mm -hmm. um, do they mm – -hmm. is he the decoy? You know, do they go to him once out of every 10 plays, right? If he's a decoy, hey, you might just want to play base defense, say, I, you know, hope and, you know, hope and cross my fingers and I'll throw it to him right here at the corner one-on-one, -on -one, right? So think about, you know, on P and 10, what's their answer? You know, what do they do with that guy? Now, if it's 60, 40, he's getting the ball six times out of 10, you might not want to have an, you might want to have an answer, okay? But – Think about it and how to how to bracket that X receiver, the X factor receiver. So again, talk about bracket. I'm going to show you when he's always at the X, meaning the number one uh, receiver. Again, that's out of odd front. Okay, so it's trips. Obviously, it's trips split. Um, the coach talked about you know, well, what if he's at the Z? What if he's at the Y? What if he's at, at the H? We've got to answer for that. If you want to talk about that, DM me on Twitter at Coach Gallup. Okay, so I'm going to talk about only from a number one aspect. I mean, he's singled up, right? So. We call it, we call it bracket. And we have lots of variations, of, you know, where we can play trap and we can go over the top or we can, you know, invert it down or, or whatever. But we play bracket. Okay, and what this does from, again, from, from an odd front standpoint, we're playing four I, zero four I, or four zero four, and you can, you can move it, slant it, whatever. And, you know, let's say they flare the back, but the jack's got to take it. We're playing, we're playing true bracket. We're playing two one one with the three in the corner. So the free safety is seeing ball to one. I mean, if he gets run game, he's got, he's got a slow step, okay? He's got a flat foot to run game, right? He's still a seventh fitter, but if I get past, my eyes are cutting to X. Whether he's shallow, vertical, okay, climb, whatever it may be, it's the corner and the free safety. He knows the corner's playing Meg. Fancy turn from man everywhere he goes, okay? So, you know, if you're a four-down standpoint guy, um, you know, you can put your five, your five there, right? Your shade there, tackles a three technique jack and still do the same thing right mm -hmm. you can still do it and rush that guy but if he crosses his face cross with it okay and i know some guys who they take the will and they want to get a four-man rush because they're running some kind of stunt or whatever it is and the will takes it. you can do that too obviously at a four down okay but what we're doing is the free safety his eyes are saying ball to one and we're cutting one immediately if it if it, if it you know says ball to pass right snap or pass over here, all we're doing is we're, you know, like everybody does, special, lock, whatever anybody's favorite term is for playing, you know, four over three to twins. Um, but, again, trying to take away this guy right here. 
Okay, so here's scenario. Let me go to the wide copy. This guy down here, um, this is when I was at Norman North, Oklahoma. Um, you know, these guys really, really spread us out. Okay, and, and what we're doing is we're playing bracket uh, to this X receiver down here. Okay, this guy, if he caught the football, we were in for a long night. And you'll notice that we're in an odd front, obviously, and we're playing one, two, three on this X receiver. Okay, again, they're in pistol. If the back were to shoot here, the jack, the jack would obviously leverage the back, and we're still one for two with the corner and free safety. Um, it's really good if the back stays in, or he pushes to, to a quad set. Obviously, now the mic's got to push, right? Um, but when they keep the back in protection, you know, again, they got us. We're not trying to get pressure. It's, you know, it's hour three for their six. I mean, they win. Do the math, right? But we're bracketing this guy because he's not allowed. You see the free safety and the corner. Corn's playing man. Man everywhere goes. Meg. The free safety, he's playing ball to one. Okay, same same scenario. All right, same opponent. Now, again, they got trips. Now it's really good. The back's away. Now, now it is a quads idea. Three by one plus, right? Now the Jack knows he can help with, with the corner two and the free safety. So it's free safety and ball to one. Knows the free safety. You're playing, you're playing on top of, of one and the corner's underneath. He's the Meg player. He's the man everywhere he goes player. Okay, now here's a situation where let's say, hey, you want to bring a four-man rush weak, right? You're still going to play two over one. So now instead of playing true bracket, or doing is we're playing like underneath with the, with the free safety and on top of the corner. Now, again, everybody does this, guys, but I'm showing you a way to play three over one because sometimes you need to. And guys, we play in Texas, man, sometimes and in Oklahoma, sometimes you've got to play three over one. You're like, Coach, that's crazy. Well, some of those guys that, that, that we're playing are going, you know, have SEC offer and Big 12 offer, and we can't tell our corner all night, hey, you're on your own, good luck. Um, so we've got to find a way to, to, to give our kid a chance. Um, so, again, here's a way to play under, over. When I say under, under with the free safety, over with the corner, and bring a four-man rush weak with our jack. Okay, and you'll notice the very next play, because sometimes defense coordinators can't help themselves, is now it's third and 20. And, again, this guy over here to the X side, he can't catch football. If he catches, it's going to be a long night. Somebody else has got to beat us. So now we do the same thing. They slide to it. Same idea. Okay. So now here's the situation. This is the game plan deal that it is. No, it's third and 12. You can see that. It's got a three on. It's third and 12. We stayed base defense on here. Um, and we're playing, again, bracket. This guy right here went 6-4, and if he caught the football, it's going to be a long night. So we're playing bracket again with the corner and the free. You'll see the free safety begin to cut one. Now, you'll notice the corner 17 right there. That's just a guy being a football player. I mean, that's just a guy recognizing that he's getting booed. And this is a good, good, good scheme, good play by them in this certain coverage. Um, obviously, our, our jack has to be the pull-up player, the boot player, um, and our – you know, they've, they've got the, the sniffer in the flat. And so it's a, it's a good scheme by them. This is just, a, uh, you know, again, it's third and 12. And we actually get a, get a takeaway. We get a fumble right there. Okay. So empty checks, all right? Empty checks. So here you go, you four down front, guys. Here's a way to do it from an off-front perspective. Take three empty checks away with you every game. Every, every, every night we take three with us. We have a, we have a safe. We have cautious, and then we have we're gonna we're gonna green light it. Like we're we are going to to bring six, bring seven. Okay, you know man blitz. I say that man blitz isn't always the answer. Now we won't always bring six until five guys to win. Uh, with again no zero post help, right? You're playing zero coverage and bringing six. Now I know they got five to block. You're bringing six, but if that ball's catch snap, you know throw right. Uh, that six may not hit there. So, you know. Be multiple in coverage, just know where the guy is, game plan that thing. All right, so, again, carry, carry three with you. Again, can we run cover zero to empty? Sure, we can. Do we? We do. Okay, but as a second 
guys played it and secondary guys coached it, it's hard asking five guys to win with no help. You know, that like seven-yard hits that, that's throwing the boundary and all of a sudden your, your corner misses it, it's going seven yards to seven points, right? So, um, you know, and have a spy for the quarterback. You know, his one job. You'll see where we drop eight and the will – our will linebacker doesn't move. His job is to look at the quarterback. He doesn't have any pass responsibility. If he breaks or flushes the pocket, the will's going to take it. Um, motion adjustments. I'll show you this one here in a little bit. Okay, so like for us, here was a, here was a game night where they put this guy is you know it's two by two, but this guy's kind of in up position. So what we did is we just played quarters or palms to one and two on both sides, and the mic the mic played the C gap, and he had that that guy man vertical. You know, if he was out, well, he just played played regular right quarters. But if he was vertical, he took it, right? Here, it's true, you know, true three by two. Now, again, we're playing what we call lock or, or you know, quarters, palms to, to twins. And then you got to have a bracket call where we're going to bracket the dude, okay? So wherever he is, whether he's too weak or he's too strong, we're going to play bracket to that guy. Okay, so here was a scenario where now we're playing our base. Notice we're three-man front, okay, and we're playing locks. We're, we're what we call lock. The corn's got one. The, the uh, nickel and the strong are playing palms off three and two. There's our mic. Our will is going to spy the quarterback. Our jack is the three-over-two player. Our free and our corner are just playing, um, you know, a quarters type idea on, on twins week. It also really helps when you get a sack on a three-man rush. So, but but you get the idea. Notice the wheel. He's on the hash, and he doesn't move. His he's the spy guy because again, that guy right there, if he were to break, uh, he was going to outrun a bunch of us. So uh, it's important that we had a spy on him. Okay, now. Here's a situation where we're against twins to both sides, right? And now there's the number three. Notice he's kind of an off-wide tight end spot. So the mic is looking at him. He's still a C-gap player. We're playing 4-I, 0-4-I. If three was vertical, he's got it. Okay, if, if he pass pros, you know, six-man pro, now he's going he's gonna to drop and cut two. If he's out, he's going to cut two, right? So to go back, Again, we're playing, we're playing buzz scores. You'll see the Jack take the bubble to, uh, to our sideline up there. So, again, you'll see from the end zone copy, see we're playing 4-I, 0-4-I. The mic is looking at that, that Y off, that sniffer guy, uh, playing quarters to both sides. It's bubble, so the, so the seven, the outside linebacker, the Jack's going to take the bubble. We're playing buzz quarters. Okay, now, same idea. Same formation I showed you earlier. Twins to the right, twins to the left, but here's the number three in a sniffer alignment. Now, I'll talk about motion adjustments. Here was a game plan where if they motioned here, we were going to blitz into it and roll cover three. Okay, so it was going to roll cover three, strong, middle of field player. Now, we do it late. You know, you, you see the field safety. He doesn't get down because he's not – ready to go and prepared, but um, there's the idea. You see that the, the Sam, right, our, our nickel, our nickel Sam backer and our Mike are blitzing into the flow, into the, into the jet. Okay, now here's a situation in empty where this guy we had to bracket, no matter where he was. Um, so, again, we're playing locked at one, two, three. This guy was the bracket dude, okay? If he went out or vertical, we were going to play leverage with the outside linebacker and, and bracket with the safety two. So, now, you see if the outside linebacker takes the wheel, takes the wheel by the guy, the safety, he's trying to bait it. He's, you know, he's a good player. He's trying to bait the post underneath. Um, Again, smart player, smart kid, understands. But as a game plan, we've got one and two on the sniffer, and we're telling um, 
the, the, you know, the corner to play good luck number one post. Because, again, the guy who's in the slot uh, or in the, that sniffer, if he caught it, it's going to be a long night. So we had to find a way to bracket him. Quads, so it knows it's four by one. So again, corners got one. We're playing a, a and you can play man, man. You can do it however you want. So what we're doing is we're playing man on one, lock on two and three. The free safety is playing solo or poach with four. Now again, here's this guy that we talked about earlier where our jack, notice we backed up our jack and our corner are playing two on one versus their, their number one receiver to the boundary. Again, really good when you get a three-man three man rush for a sack. Okay, I think it's the last one. Okay, so uh, third down blitz package. Okay, what, what we call Renegade, and I know some of you guys probably are seeing this. Um, Renegade is our stand-up package. We're all letter stand-up, Okay. And, and so for any of you guys, it's a third and long situation. It's by no means first 10, okay? So it's a third and long, um, you know, we call renegade. And, it's, guys, it's awesome. I'm going to be honest with you. It's simple. It's fun. It makes people work on it. You know, people are talking about those old, sim, you know, simulated pressures, and showing a, an overload front, and then they bring it from the other side. Um, not exactly that, but you will see that our kids have so much fun with this. And it breaks up the monotony of practice. You know, you do inside running scale and – and, you know, all this formation stuff. And, and this gives kids a five, ten-minute period of just go out and have fun. And you're able to steal wide receivers or running backs or speed guys and ask your OC, your head coach, hey, can I borrow these two guys to be on the renegade package? Um, it's the best 11 guys you have. You speed, you skill. Get the nose guard off the field. Get the three technique off the field unless he's just your dude. All right, kids love it. It allows for fun. It breaks up the, the monotony of practice and creates confusion for the offense. They don't know how to block it. Um, they don't know how to pass pro. And you'll see where, where we actually rush four and we take up six of their pass pro. So, and we can bring a two-man rush, a three-man, four, five, six. Who's blitzing? Who's dropping? Who's the spy guy? Who's the push three guy? Um, what coverage are we playing? Okay, and when we classify it, classify the personnel, the package is renegade. So all I say on the sidelines, renegade, renegade, renegade. And then I signal in the blitz and the coverage. So I've said two words when they're on the, when that package is on the field and and – they know what to do. So notice that that I'm big on word association. We'll talk more about word association terminology. Get get with me. Again, at Coach Gower on Twitter. Um, so you notice they're Native American terms, right? So our strong blitz obviously have S's in them. Middle blitzes are are uh, obviously through the middle and weeks are are W or, or Chief, which is a corner blitz. Uh, so I'm just going to show you a few where again we are all. Um, we're all standing up here, okay, and, and it's confusing for the offense. And, and, guys, you've shown this. You may have worked on this. The opponent may know it's coming. It's still diff difficult to replicate in practice. Um, it's still difficult to replicate who's coming, who's dropping, who's spy guy rushing two, rushing three, rushing four, rushing five, what's the coverage. Here what we're doing is we're what we call Apache and playing, playing two man out of it. And you'll notice how we take up uh, – well, we're bringing four – but we take up six of their blockers for three. You'll notice our edge rush guy is about to come free. So the Q's got to get rid of it. Again, we're playing two-man coverage. You can play all sorts of coverage with this. Um, but notice, we're standing up. It's a third and 11 situation. Um, I wish they'd move around a little bit more. But again, the offense is not sure how to block it. Notice that, uh, again, our three take up their six. Our mic off the edge is, is the ball better come out fast. Okay, same situation, all right? Um, you know, how are you going to count it, right? And, again, we're taking away this guy. knows the trips formation. Okay, we're taking out uh, the, the X receiver away from trips, right? So, we walked our jack. The corner's on top. Uh, and this, it's really going on a Hail Mary situation. This is actually right before uh, halftime. It's kind of a Hail Mary deal. Obviously, you know, high school football, kind of long kick and field goal. So, who's, who's rushing? You know, we've got one, I guess a two, a walk off, but we've got three on this side of the center. Uh, you know, who's coming? Who's blitzing? Who's dropping? 
You know, here's, here's what we call X. Okay, you know, it's a double A gap blitz, and notice the X, right? So it's A with an X, and you'll notice the Mike and Will, they're X. There's our spy guy. You see our, you know, guys on the 35 on the hash. Is he coming? Nope, he's dropping. So, again, we took up six of their block, six for our four. Okay, same situation. Here's Ax again, right? They kept, they kept six in protection uh, – seven in protection, excuse me. And, again, we're able – with that, now we don't hit home, but the, the cue on film is seeing us hit home enough that he's got to get the ball out. And, again, in this coverage, we're playing two-man, so we're playing corner and free safety on top of that, that receiver right there. Um, it's a win for us. Okay, now, here's a situation where, um, you know, they're in two-back. Coach, what about your run fits? Who's a spill player? Who's a lever player? Yep, we're not worried about it. Okay, if somebody runs the football on us on third and ten, we feel like it's a win for us. You know, if they get two or three yards, four, hey, it's fourth and six punt on the 34-yard line. That's a win for us. Um, do people, and some people wave the white flag and say, hey, we'll punt it, we'll try again next time, try to pin them deep, see what happens. Um, so I, I consider that a win if people on third and ten, third, you know, third and long plus are running the football against this Renegade package. And again, you notice now if they throw it to this guy, we've got one, two, three on him. We've got him bracketed. And you're saying that coaches, you know, there's five guys in the box versus 20 personnel. I get it. I understand. Okay, but but for us again, how do you block this? Who's going to become the shade? Who's the three technique? Who's, who's the dropper? Who's, who's the edge rusher? Because, again, even an inside run, you know, normally they've got a five, a shade, a three, or a four eye, a zero, four eye, right? They know where you're going to be. Here they don't know. Where's he blitzing? Where's he, where's he going to be at? Okay, and again, you know, here's what we call axe. Notice we got a spy on the back. And like, here's why I love it. Because of these three right here, who are all bunched up, you don't know which one of them's coming, which one's a spy guy, and which one of them's the, the push three guy, right? It's trips. Who's going to be the four over three guy? You know, are we going to get this, that, that, or are you going to get, you know, that, and he's going to blitz all the way across, and he's the edge rusher, okay? You know, what are you getting? with those three guys to the trips. Okay, and here's a scenario where now we've got a spy. Uh, we've got a spy on the back, and we're only going to bring two here. I think this is the last one. So we're going to bring two. Notice, again, it's third and 12. Notice where the, where the referee is. It's third and long. We're going to bring it from the boundary here and, and, and spy the back. So you'll notice that we're actually rushed two and drop nine here. So um, there's kind of my, my spiel. Um, Hope, hope you guys got something out of it. There's my contact again. Um, you know, again, my name's Ty Gower. I'm defense coordinator at Prince of Texas. Uh, there's my Twitter at Coach Gower, all one word. If you got a better way to do things, you know, stuff that makes more sense, man, I'm all ears. I'm a coach kid. I love learning and talking ball, and I've learned from some great people. And, and feel like, um, oh, because I've been around great people, I've, I've been able to, to take some things, do some things, and put my own flavor on it. But, I'm still learning, man. I'm still there's a book that doesn't have any any you know any print on it. It's it's an open book right now. So um, you know if you if you liked it or, or or you didn't like it, you say, Coach, what if you do it this way? I'd love to hear it. So um, I'm gonna stop there, uh, guys. Again, I hope you got something from it. Um, I really appreciate Chief Pixie. I really appreciate you guys having me. Um, and, and with that, thank you very much, Coach. That was good stuff, man. That was over an hour of I was sitting here just taking notes the entire time. I'm really curious about um, what you called your renegade package. Uh, what, can you talk a little bit about the install process with that? Like, yeah, is that a one day install, a two day install, something you work on four or five times a week. Um, kind of walk me through that. So, sure. because I'm interested in installing myself. 
Yeah. So when we install Renegade and, and you know, you know, your kids, you're in, even in January, you're like, okay, I know he plays receiver, but he's one of the best 11 kids we got. Um, and sometimes, hey, your offense coordinator and head coach going, mm, don't really want my best receiver on defense. And you're like, hey, I get it. I get it. So then you go to the 12th. You know, so, so even in January and February, you're cooking up who is your fastest 11 dudes on, on the roster. You know, and sometimes – and I've done it with only defensive guys. And I'll, I'll be honest with you where, um, you know, that nose I, – I kind of put my arm around the nose say, hey, buddy, I love you, but you're, you're not one of the fastest 20 kids we have. You know? And so um, I say that kind of jokingly, but uh, you look for your best 11. You know, and then you kind of go down a list of, of who's the 12th, who's the 13th, who's the 14th. You know, and that's the and, – and, and I'll be honest with you. I beg, borrow, and steal from our OC and our head coach, and can I have this kid? Um, and, you know, if they say no, then, hey, okay, I'll go find the next one. And here's another deal is, is – I, I didn't say this, but if they do say no, let's say you've got that sophomore DB who he's not your starter, but he's good enough to get on special teams and good enough to be on, on, the, on the field for you on third and nine. He can run. He can play. He's going to be a good player as a junior and senior. Get him some reps now. You know, and you do it five times a night, six times a night. You know, it's not something where he has to play 15 snaps a game on defense for you. But something that creates buy-in. It's something that keeps him engaged in the game. It's something that, that you give him a job. Um, and, 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 you know, it, it, it creates a loyalty. It creates a relationship with that kid who he's that sophomore who you're like, all right, he's, he's not one of the best four DBs, but he's, he can get on a dime package, you know. So uh, when it comes – there's your personnel speed. When it comes to, to install, you know, how, how do you name it? You know, for us, like I said, it's a renegade package. Um, we use Native American terms. So when I say Seminole coverage, boom, two words, done. That's the blitz. Tomahawk coverage. There's the blitz, there's the coverage, boom, done. And so, so all 11 kids know when I call Renegade, you know, I've had, hey, we've done it to where we've had five on and five off, and it looks like a, like a psychotic fire drill going off. Um, but that was a way to get our fastest 11 kids on the field. Um, so, so personnel, what do you name it, and when are you ready to do it? You know, and that's the deal of – when are you ready to do it? And I don't have that answer. It's just you kind of wake up and like, you know what, I feel like it's time to put it in. Is it day three? Is it day four? Is it day five? And what we do is we, we put it in and say, okay, here's our personnel. Here's our names. And here's our one weak. Here's our one strong. And then you can kind of create, you know, like I said, acts where, where Mike and our Will are doing this, you know. So we'll put a one in strong, one in weak. And if I feel like it or if we feel good about putting in one middle, and it's easy. And I tell the kids, I'm like, Coach, well, where do I, you know, what do I do? And you saw one where 10 guys standing up and one has hands there. Fine. No problem. So we tell our kids, well, if you want to start, if you want to start on lane four of the track, great. I don't – if you – if all 11 of you guys want to be on one side of the football, great. And we joke about that. But, you know, people are doing the whole sim pressure where they're overloading one side and bringing it from another. And no way am I saying that was the original sin pressure. No way, no how. I'm not saying that at all. But you saw how who's coming, who's dropping, who's the spy guy. Are they all three dropping? Are they all three coming, right? So to answer your question about when do you, does it go in, you'd like for it, and I'll be honest with you, you'd like for it to be the second week at camp. If it's not, it's not. Uh, but we will have it in by – or by a district ball game. Yeah. You kind of alluded to it. It was, it was going to be my next question about the package. It sounds like it's one of those deals where you, you don't micromanage it, right? You tell the guys on ax, you need to make sure you get to this gap. You need to make sure you get to this gap. I don't care where you line up, confuse the offense, move around. Just make sure that when the ball is snapped, you get to this gap. Correct. And, and that's where – um, and, and again, this was not something I came up with. Okay, this is this. Now we put my own, our us my own little flavor on it, but this is nothing that that I sat in bed one night and went, "Hey, this looks pretty cool." This is something I stole, saw, stole, begged, and borrowed. Um, you know, that's the deal as coaches. We always tell our kids get in the three technique or or gap out or or you know you you got a slide shuffle corner or you, you know your eyes got to be here. And what our kids hear that every day and 
As coaches, we are the world's worst. And our kids, and y'all know it, they get tired of hearing that. You got to put your hand here. Your your eyes got to be here. Your hand placement. You got to block the struck, and you got to make the. This gives kids so much freedom. That I say freedom. It gives them ninety eight percent freedom. There's two percent that I'm not going to put out publicly on YouTube about some things that are non negotiable about this package. Uh, right. If you want to talk about that again, you can DM me if we don't play you. But ninety um, percent of it is freedom for our kids. Like you said, you start. You want to start. In a, you know, on a sideline by me, and then all of a sudden, if I say axe, your butt better be in the A-gap on the snap. And so uh, our kids love it because it is kind of a fun backyard. And our, and that's the deal. Our kids, when I was at North, um, our kids had kind of figured out some some of their own little tacks. We're going to run axe, but we're going to do it our way. You know, and, and when it works, hey, great job. When it doesn't, they know what's coming. You know, they know what's coming. And so, and some of the, hey, I'll be honest, some of the best renegade stuff that we've done is because our kids made their own little tags, their own little stuff. I'm like, how did I come up with that? I mean, we just did. Just, hey, you go first, you go second, and I'll go third, you know, or, hey, you, you go here, I'll go here, I'll take your job. Because our kids understood that the process and the blitz patterns of Axe and Sue and Seminole and Savage, so. Yeah, man, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to present it to my staff here pretty soon. That was interesting stuff. And your whole presentation kind of lent itself to to what we're seeing with defensive football in that, you know, you might be a 4-2-5 defense or a 3-4 or a 3-3, but we're kind of going towards positionless football where these fronts and these coverages are kind of interchangeable. And, yeah. you know, we might move you to our jack linebacker, but you essentially become a five technique. And, you know. It, and that's where we go. We played some – now, not, not as a base, not – this was kind of one of those late in the year, let's put some stuff on tape. That's where we found the three safety stuff. Mm -hmm. um, again, not as a base. I'm no three safety coach by any means. But as a change-up, it was really good that we – it was our Jack who one play he was a nine technique. The next play he was kind of a walk-off three by three. The next play he was a backed-up safety. and We did not change personnel. And so that positionless defense, if we were able to teach that one kid, and he was really, really smart. Yeah. But we taught that one kid a plethora of things to do from different alignments, you know, from different bluffs. Or, you know, you're going to start here nine yards deep, but you're going to roll down to where you really play on day one of spring ball. And so um, it's in our playbook, he's still the jack. He's the boundary outside linebacker. Right. But it can also be the boundary safety, too. Well, and what a lot of offensive guys are saying anymore is alignment reveals assignment. It's been that way for, since I've been, probably since football has be, began. So it, that's kind of our way on, on the defensive side of the ball to stay ahead of these guys, right? Alignment doesn't necessarily reveal assignment in this case. Right. So, Coach, I really appreciated it, man. Um, I filled up a notebook this evening with this stuff. So it was kind of a free clinic for me. I appreciate it. Um, Again, this is Coach Ty Gower, defensive coordinator, Princeton High School in Texas. Uh, if you are interested in this video or want to see more like it, be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel or check out our clinic at clinic.chiefpigskin.com. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it.